Hi, <coughs> welcome to Rad Linux. And uh, today I want to switch up the content a little bit. I want to talk about my migration from Ubuntu to Pop OS. I've been making a lot of uh, kind of live USB content and some different stuff on this channel, and I've enjoyed that. But uh, I really enjoy uh, installing Linux to devices, uh, and I want to discuss more about that. I want to talk more about that. I have a video coming up about uh, the NVIDIA 340 drivers, which are a depreciated driver set, and trying to get those running on your old computer. Uh, and I'm also like, you know, I've been making some changes on my on my personal PC and my home PC. So I, I uh, you know, I want to kind of talk about that, document some of that, those changes uh, that I've been making as well. So I am a long time Ubuntu user. I started using Ubuntu in like 2014. Uh, and I, I went that route because I uh, had an XP box that was just on the last legs and uh, I needed to keep it. I needed to hold on to it. I didn't have money for a new computer, so I, I uh, ended up installing Linux on it. Uh, I took that knowledge and when I was ready to buy a new PC, uh, I decided to buy a System76 computer. Uh, this was like right before, this is like in the beginning of their, their uh, of, of system 76 and so they hadn't started distributing pop yet pop was uh new it came out like i think in the a couple only a couple months after i had actually purchased my computer but i didn't want to migrate because i was there for something a little different i was on linux not because i was like a nerd trying to distro hop uh, which i am a nerd but i just wasn't like that uh aware of what was going on uh what i really wanted was stability something i wasn't getting in windows so uh, I actually took like the LTS path. I started out on 16 with, uh, with my, my new system 76 box, went to 18, went to 20, uh, 04, all LTS. Uh, and I think that was a smart decision for me at the time, especially because I wanted stability and not just stability in terms of like, I didn't want it to crash. I wanted to know where my settings were. I wanted to know what was going on with my computer. And I didn't want it to be changing all the time and constantly in flux. So, uh, so I, I stuck with it with Ubuntu. And I think that was a good decision for me at the time. I wouldn't do that in twenty twenty two because I don't think that you we have the same problems that were still kind of existing that uh, just just six to eight years ago. But uh, yeah, so I you know I I, uh, I I did all these upgrades and. At a certain point, if you keep upgrading, and frankly, this is also my very first like real like Linux PC where I was like really trying to figure stuff out. And uh, so there was a lot of quirks, a lot of things that I had kind of messed up or things that had gotten messed up by upgrades or things that just kind of weren't the same. Uh, what you'll find is that if you have an upgraded version of something like Ubuntu, uh, support becomes harder and harder and harder because you're going to find out that there are some elements of Ubuntu 16 that are still in your Ubuntu 20 install. Uh, and at a certain point, you might want to back up and do a fresh a fresh install. Uh, and that's where I ended, my, ended up. Because, I mean, 2204 was around the corner, or kind of is around the corner. And uh, I wanted to make sure that I was going to be prepared for, for uh, the next, you know, however long I decide to keep this computer or use this computer. Uh, so I had some choices, some options. Um, I, I'm a much more competent Linux user now than I was when I started. Uh, so I don't feel obligated to stick with Ubuntu. Um, although I could do, could have done a fresh Ubuntu install and probably been pretty satisfied uh, with, with the outcome of that. Uh, you know, I could have done an Arch install. I've done, I'm comfortable enough with partitioning drives and I've done some Arch work. Uh, I could do a vanilla Arch install. But I didn't want to have this computer have the extra downtime that Arch might come with. Arch is pretty stable. Arch is good. It's a good distribution, but uh, but I didn't want to put it on my main PC. Uh, if I want to play with Arch, I'll put it on another computer, uh, and I'll, I'll play with it there and uh, have a good time and not like be constantly kind of in flux trying to struggle just so I can play games. Uh, or just do practical things on my computer. Uh, and, and so I kind of was like, maybe Arch isn't the right direction. Now, I, I've been using Fedora a lot. A lot of 
Uh, my videos are actually about Fedora, but I, I like to using Fedora for the 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 hardware uh, compatibility with some of my older devices, and I like using Fedora uh, with like a very different window manager than is the the norm for a straightforward uh, Fedora install, which is GNOME. And, uh, you know, frankly, there's a lot of differences in Fedora once you start changing between uh, the various flavors, because Fedora is so vanilla that they're willing to do basically anything to keep from putting a, a package that doesn't really belong uh, into a desktop environment. So, I mean, so far as that, you know, using the LXQ distribution of Fedora uh, means that you're only going to be able to access your Bluetooth using Bluetooth control. There is no native QT uh, program to make that that happen, to make that work. Uh, so they don't they just don't ship anything. Whereas like other distributions might ship like Blue Devil or, or some other kind of software to take that fill that hole. Fedora just doesn't. So, you know, I didn't want to use that on my main PC. I didn't want to have to, again, fight my computer as much. I want my main PC to be a pretty straightforward affair. Uh, and, and there was one distribution that I just kind of hadn't really put on this computer, this computer I've been kind of calling for, right? Because this is a System76 box. This is a System76 computer, and it never ran pop, never ran pop OS. So I decided now was the time I wanted to take a shot and I wanted to install Pop because Pop has uh, some very intriguing features uh, and it had I was already running like a, a Pop PPA in my uh, my Ubuntu install to get some of the the, the more up to date drivers and some of the more up to date software. Uh, so it just it just kind of made sense, you know. I wanted to try out the new Cosmic Desktop. There's a lot of really fun stuff going on. So a couple months ago, probably, I mean, last year at some point, probably November, December-ish, uh, I just decided that now was the time. I was kind of running into a wall on my about on, on something on my Ubuntu install, and I was like, hey, this is just the time. I'm tired of this. So I went ahead, and I uh, started, I backed up, and I, I kind of started from scratch. I didn't, uh, you know, create a package list so I could reinstall on all my packages. I didn't do any of that because I, I really want to start from scratch. Uh, in a lot of ways. So I just backed up kind of like some of my dot files and my, you know, my home folder, all that kind of basic stuff, uh, and moved on over to Pop OS. And I got to say, it, it was it hit me a little bit hard. Uh, I've been using Ubuntu, and I've been using Linux long enough that some of the things in Pop really threw me, threw me for a loop. Things that people probably wouldn't really notice if they weren't trying to do stupid things with their computer, but... Uh, in my case, I, I ran into something pretty quickly out of the gate. So I'm a firm believer in the Liquorix kernel for my PC. Uh, I I think that's one of the misses in like the the, the custom kernel or gaming kernel space. Is there's like a fight between like Xanmod and Liquorix. So every time I bring up Liquorix, someone always recommends Xanmod. Uh, and I've tried both, and I just on my PC I have better success with reducing latency, which is why I feel like I want the Liquorix kernel. Uh, than I have with the Ubuntu mainline or the Zenmod kernel. And so uh, immediately I tried to just use the Pop OS kernel, thinking maybe there's some tweaks and stuff, but I was running into the same latency issues I was running into with Ubuntu. So I was like, all right, fine, that's, that's no problem. I'll just install Liquorix because I know how to do that. I've been doing that on, on many PCs and I've played with this concept a bunch. Uh, but lo and behold uh this you know pop os does not use grub pop os uses system d boot uh and i don't think system d boot is bad i'm not an anti system d person uh but it, it is different very different and there it was a little bit of a struggle to find the resources i needed uh to be able to understand how to add a a boot list uh, and and add Liquorix to that boot list. Uh, it, there wasn't a ton of resources out there, and it was kind of a pain in the butt to get done. Uh, that's actually why I have a video of it, of me doing that up here, because it was such a, a frustration that I was like, well, if anybody else ever have, runs into this, they should be able to solve that pretty quick. Uh, and so I, I got the Liquorix kernels running, and it was pretty cool, but I gotta say, Pop! OS is, is really kind of in its stride right now. 
And I think that now is definitely the right time to start making the switch over to pop if that's something that's intriguing to you. Uh, because pop has gone ahead and done some interesting things uh, really in the last few months. So pop OS, uh, it was running Ubuntu kernel or running off of, I think, the mainline Ubuntu kernel for a while, right? So uh, they were running a little bit behind, but as a system that really wants to uh, work with gaming, Pop has decided to start shipping the way newer kernel. Uh, and I think this might have to do with the fact that they're starting to distribute a lot of, uh, or they're starting to sell a lot more AMD products and AMD, uh, or AMD drivers are in the kernel. So if you want an up-to-date graphics driver for your AMD card, you're going to need a newer kernel. And so I assume that if they're interested in that, that's probably one of the reasons why they're sticking with a, they're, they're going with a, a more up-to-date kernel. Uh, but I, I started using the generic kernel, noticing that they were starting, they were at 15 or 515, uh, well ahead of when I assumed Ubuntu would switch over to that. And uh, it's flowing. It's flowing nicely. The latency is low on these new kernels. Uh, it feels like I'm using a Licorix kernel. And frankly, I stopped using Licorix. I haven't had to use Licorix uh, since switching to Pop or since Pop switched over to the, the newer kernel structure. So that's really cool. Um, and that's one less thing I, I have to be worried about because, uh, I mean, I would regularly uh, install new Licorix kernels, benchmark them, and see if they were uh, which one works, was working for my computer best because that's just the way that, like, these custom kernels work. I mean, uh, for me, it was, like, w once every, like, few uh, upgrades, there would be a good kernel, but there were also not as good kernels in there uh, that weren't targeting my system properly, that weren't targeting... Uh, maybe even, you know, Ubuntu properly, right? Maybe they were targeting Debian better or targeting something else in the family better. Uh, but, Licker, you know, that's the thing with kernels in general. They're, they're all kind of hit or miss, especially depending on which distribution and what hardware, har what hardware you're running. So, uh, yeah, so that that's a really cool perk. Uh, but that's like just really one of, I think, the, the differences between System76 is Pop! OS and some of the other distributions out there. Uh, System76 is really looking to create a performant, uh, high-quality distribution uh, that works well with their computers and other computers. Uh, and that shows in a lot of the things that they're focusing their time and their energy on uh, because they're also, they've also introduced something cool and new, which is a, a, a stronger CPU scheduler for the desktop and for gaming. Uh, and I gotta say that it's only been out for a little bit, but I do feel like I'm getting a much more consistent gameplay. I'm able to attain 60 FPS gameplay way, way, way better on this GT 1050 that I have. It's like two gigabytes of VRAM. It's not a powerful card. It's actually a pretty powerful variant in terms of like core clocks, but like two gigabytes of RAM is the cap. It, it's the boot or the bottleneck on this computer, really. Uh, but yeah, but that's just indicative of what System76 is doing, right? System76 is really pushing to create a uh, faster, cleaner, better Linux. Uh, and that's cool. And they're not afraid of pushing the wall on proprietary things the same way that like an Arch distribution uh, really doesn't care about keeping things solely free and open source uh, because they know that that's like not really realistic and that's limiting your package selection. So people are, they're like, no, I don't want to do that. I want everything to run. Uh, and that's, where, that's kind of where Pop is. Pop is really pushing to get everything running. They want to give you the experience of having all the things you wanted on Windows in a Linux desktop. Cool. Fine. I mean, you know, it's still Linux and it still operates like Linux, even though there are quirks and things that I didn't understand immediately. It's still really cool. Uh, the other thing that I love about Pop, uh, and I, I guess I'll switch over to it. Why Why not? Uh, I'm going to show the desktop real fast because I am really... Okay, so I was running an i3 session over Ubuntu for a while uh, over the pandemic. I started getting really into i3. I really enjoyed it. Uh, and I was like really excited uh, at some of the performance differences that I was getting between running GNOME uh, and running i3. All right, so 
<clears throat> I messed up a little bit. I gotta re-record some of this. But uh, so here I am on the desktop. Uh, and, um, you know, the desktop is nice. I, I think I can't show the overlay because I don't think OBS actually shows the overlay. Uh, but I really like, you know, uh, the launcher. Launcher is super nice. It allows you to access uh, programs that are already open. Uh, so, you know, I'm like, oh, well, I just want to go to Kaden Live. Cool. Perfect. You know, uh, I coming from i3, I, I wish I could do certain things. I mean, yeah, I can do... Uh, I can switch between my workspaces, kind of, but it doesn't add, like, a fourth, fifth, or sixth workspace if I don't already have one open. Uh, so that's kind of like, you know, it's not the same as i3, but it's still cool. Uh, and... Um, yeah, I mean, so the tiling system works. Uh, I mean, it's probably not the best visualization because I don't like to have borders on my stuff. Uh, but, you know, I was able to kind of set up like a closed key, very similar to the way I like my i3 setup, just like, you know, uh, Super C and everything kind of closes. Um, you know, uh, we can open up the web browser and... Uh, you know, everything works pretty nicely. Uh, the thing that is a little bit of a bummer is I don't love the way that, uh, you know, it's kind of quadranted it out. Uh, so, you know, like I3, I'd be able to have three uh, equally spaced uh, vertical or horizontal windows. But here, everything is quartered. So if I, like, try to add another vertical, it's going to either put it here or it's going to put it, uh, you know, over here. Uh, but so you always have like a full and two halves or whatever, and that's that's fine. I mean, most people probably want quarters anyways, uh, but that's just you know a, a little inconvenience for me. But for the most part, everything works pretty nice. Uh, there are some quirks because this is GNOME with a bunch of you know changes to it. That's what Cosmic is, uh, and so I you know don't like having a panel as you can see on the top. Uh, and there, you know, I have a, an extension in there, but the extension is glitchy. It doesn't always work. Uh, I kind of have to make make it work sometimes. Uh, and that that's a bit of a pain in the butt. But, you know, I mean, the, the, the panel comes up when I do the overlay. Uh, so that's that's cool. Uh, I still have access to all the stuff I want. Uh, it would just not visually in my plane of sight. I don't want it there. I can get to the things myself. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, overall, this is a really nice customizable desktop. Uh, I think that you probably will not be able to, oh, I don't know, maybe, maybe you can see that, uh, I was having problems <laughs> with seeing the overlay before, but, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, I have this, this top bar up here, uh, and then, you know, I can, so I can access any of the menu stuff I want from there, uh, and, you know, if I need to use any, any of the, the conveniences of this, uh, this overlay, uh, but I can, uh, I also, uh, that's what I was going to do. No, stop. Uh, you know, and then you can, you can turn the, 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 you know, the floating window manager back on anytime you want. Uh, and that works. That's cool. Uh, I don't like it though. I'm just not a floating window kind of girl. Uh, so this is, yeah. See, so you can also see here where I started playing around and now, now there's this gap here, right, where the panel should be. Uh, switching all the way, see, and then it comes back. I don't know, whatever. Uh, that's one of the that's one of the annoyances I have with this. Uh, it's just not there. There are just like little bugs, little little bugs. But that's again, that's not on Pop OS. That's on GNOME, uh, and that's one of the reasons why GNOME it can be annoying to me. I don't I don't love everything about it. Uh, but overall, though, I mean, the, it's relatively good on system utilization. Uh, you know, I, I'm, like, actively using OBS right now, so we're not going to get a good count. But uh, generally, it, it fresh boots off at somewhere about uh, a gigabyte, whereas uh, Ubuntu was at, like, 1.2 gigabytes. Uh, I think I've actually, it's like, when it starts out, it's actually at somewhere like 900, but then, like, it runs some stuff. Uh, starts with some, some daemons and, and does some, some background work and usually ends up at about one. Uh, you know, it's just a little bit, little stuff, you know. Uh, but I, I do, it does feel like the, the desktop is a little bit quicker and a little bit more performant than a general uh, GNOME desktop. Uh, and, I, and I like that I can basically maneuver everything with the keyboard. Uh, I don't have to, you know, 
go back and forth to your mouse too often if I don't want to. Uh, and yeah, just the overall really nice customizable uh, space. You know, I don't like gaps. I don't like a background image. I don't want a desktop, uh, the, you know, the classic desktop environment. And I don't have to, uh, but you can go back and, and just, you know, do do the usual thing uh, that that you enjoy. Uh, you know, it, just depending on what you like, is a, a wide range of options available, which I think is kind of interesting. It's a different, different approach. So that's the desktop and that's some of the stuff I like about it. Uh, GNOME extensions are, are like trying to fight the GNOME paradigm and, and uh, I, you know, you can only go so far with that. But uh, yeah, overall, the desktop is really quick uh, and everything is like, pretty smooth. I, I really like the way the flat pack integration works. I've been using snaps for a long time. And I, I must say that as even though snaps are getting faster, because I've had to use them on a separate computer that I have Ubuntu on now, I still think flat packs are just way, way quicker. Um, I think that they, they, they do better at utilizing system resources. So maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Maybe that's just a personal perspective or maybe it's you know i'm just seeing things but i do think that flat packs are quicker uh and i've been liking the flat pack ecosystem more than i've liked snap uh and you know i like app images too but you know the app, app images are for when you need an app image you know i mean not everything is going to come in flat pack form but uh yeah i mean overall i just really like i really like pop os i really like it a lot uh I, i'm so much that i'm sticking with it uh, at least for the time being on this computer because what they're they're really focused on doing more to this distribution than just customizing a front end right i think a, a lot of like oem or or like you know custom small like linux built you know, pc builders or whatever uh, I like to ship just kind of like a branded distribution, but Pop! OS is not here to just be a branded Pop, uh, System76 distribution. Pop! OS is a, is, a, is a distribution that they really want to make their computers better with. I'm excited to see what happens when they rewrite the shell in Rust. I'm excited to see what 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 that what happens when they, they keep making changes and changes and changes and like they keep adding, you know, uh, better and better features. Uh, the way that they run the NVIDIA drivers is really nice. I, I'm, you know, I'm excited. I just got 510. Um, and uh, I don't love that I have an NVIDIA card. Uh, if, if I could make a change, it would be adding, a, a, you know, an AMD card. But I mean, I'm just not a rich person and I'm not buying a graphics card right now. There's just so many more things that I could be spending my money on that I probably need to than other than in buying a, you know, overpriced, super overpriced graphics card. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Like system 76 really, really comes through with this distribution and I don't want to just fan out cause yeah, I do own a system 76 computer. Um, but, and I, you know, this is like my main PC, but I, I really, I really am, I'm feeling what, what, what system 76 is doing and it's well beyond just the, the desktop it's really about how they choose to run their distribution, what they're focusing their time and their energy on, uh, what their homegrown software is doing. I mean, I love their USB flasher. Uh, it's, it's, it doesn't have to validate the whole thing. Actually, why do you need to validate my entire thing? I wish that they would make uh, a, uh, you know, a, 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 not an EMMC, like a flashcard uh flasher because i mean i i would love to be able to flash my raspberry pi uh images using uh one of their branded or one of their you know in-house products because uh i just like it better i think it works nicer uh, it looks nicer it integrates with my desktop better and it's faster <laughs> because it doesn't have to go through an entire validation process uh but yes i do have a raspberry pi pi 400 and i'm making a video about that and honestly how much i hate these raspberry pies i hate them so much i hate them i hate them i hate them <laughs> but um maybe it's just because i don't like arm architecture i think that's what it really is it's annoying me uh it's my first time but uh yeah thanks for hanging out uh, i don't know maybe i'll make some more videos of this ilk uh, i have another video i want to talk about the uh, nvidia 340 drivers i might have said that at the beginning i can't remember anymore <laughs> but uh yeah i uh i have some stuff coming in the pipeline and you know, I just really like this channel as a place to have fun. I made this because I was bored in the pandemic, but now I'm back to work and it's been harder to get myself to, to make more content for this channel. But 
uh, you know, it's it's fun. It's something I really like doing. So I want to get myself back into making some more stuff and sitting down and actually uh, talking about Linux because I've got nobody else to talk about Linux with. So <laughs> thanks for hanging out. If you if you're if you've stayed this far, thanks for watching. If you've seen any of my other videos or subscribing, I mean, I've been kind of surprised to get more than a thousand views on any video, let alone multiple videos. Uh, and uh, yeah, I just want to say thanks to everybody who's, you know, just spent any time checking out my content. But uh, yeah, hope you had fun on Rad Linux, and uh, maybe I'll see you next time.